Hey, okay, welcome to Accelerated Math Graph Quadratic Functions. And here's the deal. You're trying to figure out which one of these graphs matches with the equation. And we've got, I've got three different examples here that we can take a look at. This one is in uh, what we call standard form. And you recognize that because it's in that AX squared plus BX plus C type format. And uh, from that, we can tell a couple of things. Uh, probably the easiest thing that you can tell is the C value out here on the edge with no uh, variable, just the constant, so that minus 2, that is our y-intercept. And that basically means this is where the graph is going to, the, uh, the parabola is going to cross the y-axis. So, of course, here's my y-axis, so if you go down here and you look closely, well, this one crosses at negative 2. If you look at this one, this one crosses the y-axis. It looks more like positive 2. So we can rule this one out. And uh, I'm not really sure about that one yet. But um, anyway, this one also crosses at negative 2. So A and C, um, th those options are still in. Okay, so C, that uh, value is always the y-intercept. So that's the easiest thing to kind of pick out. And then you can rule out some of the graphs and at least get it down to usually about two of them. Now, the other part um, that you've learned uh, probably in class is this A value determines uh, a couple of things. If it's positive, it's going to be a parabola like this, okay? And I call that, uh, let's see, if, uh, if I see a graph like that, I just put two eyes on it. I call it a happy face. And that's a silly way to remember that, hey, if that's positive, that coefficient, then it's going to be a happy, happy face parabola. If it's negative, then obviously it's going to be down like this, and you put your two eyes on there. It's a sad face, okay? And this one is negative, so um, unfortunately with the, the options that we have here, it doesn't rule anything else out. All right, so let's take a look. we got to look a little bit further then. Okay, so the C was the y-intercept. The A value told me whether it was, uh, well, it gave me the positive and negative really is what they call a reflection. So this is the standard um, form of the parabola or the, uh, just, I'm looking for the right word, um, can't think of it right now, but anyway, the, uh, the basic, um, the parent function, sorry, it's early in the morning here. All right, so that's the parent function, and a negative is going to be a reflection of that, and it's going to flip over like that. All right, now, what else can we tell? Um, all right, you'll notice that these two graphs, they're not, both of these two, they're not centered. Uh, directly over the y-axis and that's because it's got some kind of a shift going on and that shift is um, well here's how we're going to figure it out okay now I'm going to go ahead and fill in this B we're going to look at the H and the K the H uh, sorry to introduce more variables but the H is the X value of the, um, the vertex Okay, so this is basically the x value of the vertex, and the k value is the y value of the vertex. And there's a little formula that says the h value is equal to negative b over 2a. And so we can find out this x value of the vertex, where this thing bottoms out or tops out, and that's going to give us a clue, because you'll notice that each one of these, well, this one... Uh, sorry, tops out there, and then this one tops out over here. So this is going to give us a little clue. So all I'm going to do is fill in this h equals negative b over 2a. b is 3, so it's negative 3 over 2 times a. In this case, is negative 4. I'm going to simplify that. So it's negative 3 over negative 8. And that uh, negative divided by negative is really a positive. So it's at 3 eighths. So my h value so my vertex, the x value of my vertex, which is the h value, is at 3 eighths. And, you know, I can really, I mean, I can go ahead and calculate the k value. And the way you do that is you take that 3 eighths and you plug it back into up here, into here. And that's quite messy with a fraction like that. It's very doable, uh, but it's a little bit messy. And uh, I guess my recommendation is uh, you can do it lots of different ways, but probably the easiest way is to go grab your calculator and plug it in. But I want you to notice that this graph down here, C, is, it's hard to tell exactly, but 3 eighths would be somewhere over there. But this one, 
the x, I'm looking at the x value, the x value of the uh, letter A over here is on the negative side, so it has to be C. But I do want to show you that if you went over to your calculator, and I'm going to move this over a little bit, we had 3 eighths for that value, so I'm going to plug in negative 4, uh, I might want to clear it first. Alright, come on calculator, wake up. You know, it's early for it too, I guess. Alright, so, negative 4. I'm, I'm basically bringing this thing in here, right here. Alright, I lost my calculator. Negative 4, uh, and I'm going to put uh, parentheses, because that's times, and x squared. This is 3 eighths squared. Whoops. Wow. Alright, so let me go back. Need to get out of that fraction. Alright, close that parentheses, square that, I told you it was messy, plus 3 times, again I'm going to do parentheses, and thank goodness for this calculator with the little fraction function in it, 3 eighths, I'm going to get out of here, close that parentheses, I'm still entering that, and then minus 2. So basically I entered that entire function, but with instead of an x in it, I put the 3 eighths that I was getting and I hit enter, I get negative 23 sixteenths. And you're going like, well, I don't know what that is. I mean, that's, you know, it's negative 1 and something. And I can hit this little toggle key and get the exact decimal of it. So it's negative 1.4, negative 1.4. So this is negative 1.4. I think I rounded a little bit there. But look back at this. So this vertex right here is supposed to have these coordinates. And it is true, you know, somewhat it's hard to see on these graphs, but this one is definitely not it. So it is C. Sorry to take so long on that one. I'll try to go a little faster here on this. Okay, this one is in a slightly different format, uh, very different. And uh, this one basically allows you to see the roots of this. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, I guess I'm looking at this. This is in this x intercept form, and it's um, x minus, sorry, x minus whatever the, um, uh, the the x-intercept is. So x minus the first x-intercept. And, oops, I'm off the board here a little bit. All right, so it's x minus 4 and x minus 4 with a negative 4 out front. Well, this value right here and this value, those represent the, um, the x-intercepts of this parabola. So if you look at this and it's in the format of x minus whatever the x-intercept is and it's times x minus whatever the x-intercept is so it's actually a positive 4 and a positive 4 so this thing intersects the x-axis at positive 4 and if you look at that that really didn't help me much because they all intercept the x-axis at Four. Okay, so we need some other clues. This um, value out front is still the A value, and if you look at that, okay, so we said the negative was going to cause it to have a, it was going to be a downward facing parabola like this, so a negative is going to make it reflect uh, downwards as compared to the parent function of being up. Okay, so that rules out A, because that was a, sorry to be so uh, whatever, but that's a happy face, and here's another happy face, so that rules those out and they're not so happy anymore. Now we're down to these negative ones and now if you look at them the only difference between these two is this one is considered a shrink and it's like it's been compressed a little bit and this one is considered a stretch and you can see that the parabola got stretched out um, and is kind of tall and skinny where this one has shrunk down and kind of short and fat kind of thing. All right, and so what causes a stretch versus a shrink? Well, the number out in front here, if it's a fraction, it's going to be a shrink. And if it's a greater than 1, then it's going to be considered a stretch. So this one is letter D. All right, those are your clues. And let's go on to the next one. All right, this one is almost in that uh, ABC type format. I'm going to change it slightly and include 
there's the A value. There was no B value. There was no X plain X coordinate. So I'll put in 0X plus 1, and that's your C value. So now I can kind of go through the same thing I did before on the first example I had. This is my Y intercept. Can I rule anybody out? Well, let's see. This one down here, letter C, crosses at negative 1, so I can rule that one out. And then letter B crosses at negative 1 also, so I can rule that one out. Okay, now we're down to just A and D, and you'll notice the main difference there is they've been reflected. One is, here's kind of the parent function, and the other one has been reflected down to that sad face. Is this one a sad face or a happy face? Well, it's a sad face. It's got the negative out front, so it is a reflection. So it is letter D, and also I want you to notice that this uh, A value is negative 6, 6 meaning that it's going to be a stretch, and you can see it's kind of a long, skinny uh, parabola, so it does look like a stretch. Okay, so that's letter D, and uh, that's it for this one, and uh, hopefully you can use those three examples to answer all the questions on there.